Hello everyone, my name is Tim Hansen, and today I'm going to be showing you how to add a Sonic Wall switch to a Gen 7 Sonic OS 7 firewall. This won't be a comprehensive video on how to manage your switch through the firewall switch network. Rather, I'm going to focus on how to get the switch added to the firewall and bring you to the point where you're ready to start configuring the switch for your specific network. Okay, so there's two ways you can add a Sonic Wall switch to a Sonic OS 7 firewall. And the first way is through what we call Zero Touch. And what this means is essentially the switch will power up, it'll send a broadcast message looking for available firewalls to manage it, and then once the firewall grabs the switch's information, the switch will appear as a manageable device on the firewall's interface, or the firewall's graphical interface, I should say. Okay. And then the second way is to manually add the switch to the firewall by entering in settings like the switch's IP address, the switch's serial number, the admin, username and password, etc. All the things that would typically get negotiated automatically if you were using Zero Touch. And then once you've all gotten all these settings added, the firewall would then use them to reach out to the switch and add it as a managed switch device. Okay, and I'm going to show you how to add the switch to my firewall or a switch to my firewall by both these methods I've just described. So at least you know what both look like and you can use either of them to get your own switch up and running. All right, so moving forward, first and foremost, you'll want to, of course, connect the switch and the firewall together. And I'll be connecting my two devices using Cat5 Ethernet. But you could all the same connect yours using CAT6 or Fiber if that's kind of what your end objective is going to be. All right, so to connect the two together, you can use any of the available physical ports on both the switch and the firewall. For my own devices, on my switch, I'll be using port 2. And on my firewall, I'll be using the X2 interface. Okay, so assuming your switch and your firewall are cabled together, the switch can stay off for the time being, and I'll assume the firewall is already powered up and accessible. So we do have a few things we have to do on the firewall first before we look at adding the switch to it. And this is regardless if you're using the manual method or the zero touch method. Okay, so once you're logged on to the firewall, head over to network system and interfaces. You'll want to find the interface that's connecting the switch and the firewall. So for me, again, I'm using X2. If I go over here and edit it, I can grab the drop down from the zone and I'll want to select LAN. Okay. You're going to want to enter the IP assignment as static and then give it a IP address and subnet. If your internal network or your LAN happens to be a flat network, you can set the interface IP so it's on the same subnet as your internal network, as this interface is likely going to be the default gateway for your LAN devices. However, if you're using VLANs to segment your internal network, you'll want to pick a arbitrary subnet outside of your internal IP address ranges. Okay. So this subnet is just going to be specific for the switch and the firewall to communicate. All your internal traffic will be funneled through VLANs. So I'm going to use the 192.168.100 subnet. And I'll give my interface a dot one address with a slash 24 CIDR notation or a 255, 255, 255 subnet mask. And then under the advanced tab, I'll tick off enable auto discovery of sonic wall switches and then once this is enabled I can press OK and my interface is set up and then the next thing we'll want to do is we'll want to verify that there's now a DHCP scope enabled for X2 so of course this is to ensure that when the switch gets powered on it gets an IP address and it gets an IP address on the same subnet as my X2 interface on the firewall so let's move over to DHCP server here. And if I hop over to DHCP server lease scopes, I should see the scope for X2 created already. It should do this when you initially configure X2. If for whatever reason it's not, you can click add dynamic to add a new scope.
And the easiest way to configure is if configure this is to simply enable interface pre-populate and then select the X2 interface and you can see things filled out automatically. Okay, and at this point we can go ahead and power up the switch. What happens when you power up the switch in a zero touch scenario? Again, like I explained before, the switch will power up. It'll get a DHCP assigned IP address. And once it has that, it'll send out a broadcast message blasting out looking for a firewall available to manage it. And assuming the firewalls is in fact within the same broadcast domain as the switch and the automatic switch discovery is enabled on the interface, the broadcast is hitting, we should see the switch come up automatically under device, switch network, and overview. So I'll head over there now. And as you can see, we've got my TZ570W here. And on X2, the firewall has detected a switch with this serial number. So all you have to do is you just have to click Authorize and what the firewall will do is it will first verify that the switch is on the latest firmware. If it's not, the firmware will get upgraded on the switch so it's on the latest version. Okay, so my switch happens to be on the latest firmware and we can see pretty quickly that it moved into the connected state. All right, and once that's done, my switch can of course be fully configured here under the firewall's UI. Now, if you are in the scenario where zero touch isn't going to work, or maybe it should work, but for whatever reason it isn't. Lucky for us, we do have a manual add button or a way to manually add switches. Okay, so the first thing I'll have to do, of course, is I'm going to have to delete the switch from my UI. And then I'll go under the interfaces page and disable auto discovery for my X2 interface. And now we know that we're intentionally, mind you, preventing the firewall from adding the switch to its switches network through zero touch. Okay, so to manually add a switch to the firewall, we'll wanna go back over to the switch network, go under overview and move over to the list view and then click add switch. We would then obviously need to fill out all the details, which I'll do here quickly. All right, and just when it comes to this section, switch management is the port on the switch you're dedicating to management in the event you do need to plug into it directly and access the switch's UI. This defaults to port one, which I'm okay with, so I'll leave that as is. And then the firewall uplink and the switch uplink is asking you to select the ports on each of the devices you're using to connect to each other. So again, in my case, I'm using X2 on the firewall and port two on the switch. And then assuming I'm okay with the STP settings, I can press apply. And we see the switch is added. All in all, a pretty simple and straightforward process. Okay, so that is going to be it for adding a Sonic Wall switch to a Gen 7 Sonic OS 7 firewall. We'll say thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.